Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to Club Sandwich. My name's Daisy Burr, I'll be your hostess this evening. I'm an Australian country entertainer. And this evening we are actually celebrating 2012, which is the Australian Year of the Farmer. Now, did anybody actually know that it's the Australian Year of the Farmer? Oh, you did, yes. Well, there's only one person. <laughs> I, I think the people that are running it don't actually know what they're doing. Unfortunately, um, they've got a road show going around and it's telling people all about what Australian farmers do and how wonderful they are. But the road show is just going to, um, it's going to country towns. Now, if you've ever been to a country town, everyone's either a farmer or they know a farmer. Goodness me, I know I've known a few farmers myself. But it, um, it's wonderful that we're doing this evening here in Newcastle because city people are the ones that need to know what farmers do, don't they? I mean, farmers are very important to our daily lives. They make the materials that make our clothes, like, you know, leather for our shoes and cotton for our socks and wool for our underwear. And, um, well, don't laugh, I mean, wool and underwear is very useful because wool holds up to 60% of its weight in liquid without feeling wet. That's pretty good, isn't it, ladies? Yes, it's very good. So, um, and that's it for me, the rest of me is 100% polyester. <laughs> but, of course, farmers are very important too because they grow the food that we eat. And most of us need to, need to eat food. Um, but it's uh, quite disturbing. They did a survey in the United Kingdom in 2007 and they were asking kiddies where they thought food came from. And uh, a disturbing number of the children thought that eggs were laid by cows. Now you'd need a pretty substantial shell to with withstand that drop, wouldn't you? And I can't see them perching to you of them. Um, some of the children also thought that bacon came from sheep and um, very few of them knew where yoghurt came from at all. But of course Australian children aren't stupid like that, are they? Not like the English, no. Australian children know where their food comes from. It comes from the supermarket, doesn't it? Yes, of course it does. And if they're very unlucky, it comes from that Scottish place, McDonald's. Now, up until yesterday, I had never ever been into a McDonald's. I never had the, um, the urge to go in there. But Neville and I, that's my son, Neville Slim Dusty Springfield Bird, <laughs> we were driving along through Maitland and Neville said to me, oh, what a lovely romantic name for a town, Maitland. I said, what do you mean, Neville? And he said, well, it must be a place where go people go to mate, isn't it? <laughs> I said, Nev, you've taken the romance right out of it. You know, it makes them sound like, like herd animals or wildlife or something like that. Anyway, we saw a banner up there, an advertising banner, and it said, uh, get your Angus burger at McDonald's. And I thought, oh, well, we're a bit hungry. That sounds all right. You know, a bit of proper beef to go and sink your teeth into. So against my better judgment, we, we went into McDonald's and apart from the smell, the place looked exactly like a feedlot. And a lot of the people in there too were the size of cattle. <laughs> they were just going up and getting their, you know, their grain up at the counter and then going back and sitting down and eating it. <laughs> anyway, Neville and I went up to the counter to get served and the young fella up there, he had a some sort of plastic disc in his ear. I said, Neb, is that a is that a livestock? Is that a tag, an ear tag? Has he escaped from a property or something? And Neville said, No, no, Mum, it's an earring. I said, What is that the fashion to look like livestock these days? <laughs> anyway, we were just about to order our food, and um, I looked down at the fella's name badge, and it said, Hello, my name is Angus. <laughs> I said, quick, Neville, let's get out of here. I don't know what they're serving us. Quick, let's go. Anyway, um, well, we were talking about farmers, weren't we? And uh, I tell you what, you know, um, environmentalists and farmers haven't always seen eye to eye. Actually, in June last year, a young lass came up to me and said, Daisy, it's World Environment Day. Are you going to go green? And I said, Pet, the only time I go green is if I have too many sherry shandies. <laughs> so, but environmentalists and farmers, they both love the land, 
but they love the land from, from different points of view. Your environmentalists often love the land from a nice renovated terrace house in the inner city. <laughs> Whereas your farmers might love it from, you know, a thrashed paddock out down the back of nowhere. So they're quite different in that way and they've clashed in the past on issues like soil and water and, you know, clearing vegetation. And one of the latest issues that farmers and environmentalists are clashing on is greenhouse gases. And the environmentalists are saying, well, there's too many uh, stock animals, too many cows in the world letting methane out their rear ends and, you know, causing the end of the world as we know it. Well, I'll tell you something about methane. It's got another name, and that name is natural gas. <laughs> That's right, yes. What comes out of the rear end is what we use, you know, to run all our uh, appliances and our heating and cooling and hot water and that sort of thing. So I've come up with a solution, and it's a win-win for everybody. I think environmentalists will like it, farmers will like it, and, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll show it to you now. If you could pop that picture up for me, Dean. Yes, beautiful. Now, what we have here, scientists have begun this. You can actually collect methane from your stockyard animals, right? Even sheep, though you don't get too much out of them. But your cows in particular, you can collect the methane. This is what happens if you don't collect the methane from them, right? Okay, so you can collect it all and then you can put it in a tank and, you know, it can be piped out to everybody and you can use the gas for something useful to run your hot water or something like that. And um, I've got a new name for this. It's not methane. I'm calling it calcine gas. <laughs> And it's wonderful because you don't need to go fracking your cows for it. <laughs> so, um, yes. And, um, and I've also, well, there's a bit of labour involved in, in, um, in ca collecting the gas and everything. So um, I thought the perfect people to do this, this job would be unemployed vegetarians. Because <laughs> I think most of them are unemployed, aren't they? <laughs> anyway. Um, so yes, of course, vegetarians are some of my favourite people. So um, I'm going to sing you a little song about them, about them now. Thank you, Dean. Um, That's enough. Right, here we go. Oh no! See, I've got this new guitar. It's, it's for the older lady. I got sick and tired of carrying the big one around. I've got this nice little one here. Here we go. Oh, get it organised. Get my fringing out of the way. I like to meet vegetarians I like to shake their thin white hands And stroke them And slap them on their bony backs For taking such a principled stand Where would we be without meat? Weak, one and tired and ready for defeat Emboldened sheep and cattle would be clogging up the street Where would we be without meat? Ask why the traditional tea of the Aborigine Does not consist of leaf or sprout or lentil When you roam this wide brown land you need all the steak you can Cause finding nuts and seeds would drive you mental I like to meet vegetarians I like to shake their thin white hands And slap them on their bony backs For taking such a principled stand Now these folks that don't like killing Well I bet that they'd be willing when the cities all run dry and markets too If the sole protein in sight was a bilby in full flight Then they'd pop it in their bark and nettle stew All together now! <laughs> we like to meet vegetarians We like to shake their thin white hands And slap them on their bones Taking such a principal step. Thank you very much. Thank
thank you, thank you. Well, I'm just, I'm about to introduce the next act. One moment there. Now this act, some of you might have seen them before, but you might not know that two of them are actually farmers. And they farm up at Bula Deal away, and I think they've got a crop of ukulele bushes in at the moment. <laughs> and they also, they've also started sowing a new pasture. It's called Blurgrass, and it's, it's a broadleaf pasture. And apparently, when the um, when the cattle eat the the Blurgrass, they start um, squeaking tunes out of their rear end. And I said, Oh, is it a bit of is it a bit of Slim Dusty or something? They said, No, it's more like Bob Marley that they like to squeak out their black back ends. So I'd like to introduce them to you now. They're a wonderful band and some of them are farmers. They are the Do Riders. Thank you. Yay.